welcome everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here in the panel. We have Megan Butcher, Thomas Tillich, uh, Buchter, excuse me for Buchter, being here. Yeah. You know, yeah. Thomas Tillich, uh, here we are still waiting for uh, um, Teresa Heithaus, who I'm sure will join us momentarily. Our topic today is to understand concrete tools and approaches for how we can engage students in the transformation of the business school so that we can help create a business school that creates a massive and relevant impact for society. Um, what I suggest um, we do is to, for us to get uh, started immediately with already who is here with uh, Megan and with Thomas. Um, why don't you give us a quick introduction of who you are? Megan, would you like to start? Sure, of course. Can you hear me okay? Wonderful. Um, my name is Megan Buchter. I'm the director of the Fowler Center for Business as an Agent of World Benefit um, at the Weatherhead School of Management at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, and today I'm going to talk about our Aim to Flourish program, which is a program used by universities all over the world. Um, we have many prime schools involved. And so I'm looking forward to telling you more about it. Wonderful. And Thomas uh, Dillick, would you introduce yourself as well? Sure. Thomas Dillick. Uh, I'm currently the director of the Institute for Business Sustainability in Lucerne, Switzerland. I'm a professor emeritus of the University of St. Gallen. I've been a professor of sustainability there for 20 years. Uh, and I was uh, responsible for, for responsibility and sustainability at the University of St. Gallen. In that position, I was in charge of the whole prime uh, job and many more. But now I've been founder of the Positive Impact Rating, and that's going to be my topic today. Thank you so much. And welcome, Teresa, to our panel here today as well. Um, congratulations for having found your way in. And welcome to everybody, <laughs> everybody else who has uh, joined us meanwhile as well. I see that we have people from around the world, which is very exciting. We will talk about how to engage students in the transformation of the business schools and look at a number of different tools. I've got some critical questions here for the panelists. Teresa, Megan, and Thomas have already briefly introduced themselves. Would you like to also briefly tell us who you are? Sure. Uh, Teresa Heithouse, I am a program manager at Wikirate, um, and we are an open data platform for company sustainability data. So we run uh, SDGs research projects with prime universities, um, engaging students in uh, looking through and finding out about how companies are reporting on different sustainability issues. Thank you so much. And um, last but not least, my name is Katrin. Uh, I'm uh, the a founder and actually the current president of the uh, Positive Impact Rating Initiative that you may have heard about, which is one way to engage students uh, into the transformation of business schools. Uh, it's my great honor and pleasure to host and moderate this panel. Uh, as to the audience, uh, you will learn here today about three concrete tools and look, I look forward to having each of you present your tools. What I suggest to get us warmed up and started is to kind of start with a broader question. Um, in your view, what support do you think students are asking for most? And how does your tool contribute to this need? And if you, if you want also maybe to the degree it doesn't. Um, so I, I will continue in the same order, Megan, if you would like to get started. Sure, I'd, I'd be happy to get started. And um, I do have a few slides just to kind of show a few things about Aim to Flourish. Should I do that now or, um, or wait until later? Um, what I suggest is that for the moment that we'll, that we'll probably use the slides for the second question, if that is fine for you. Yeah, um, and absolutely. for the moment, like I would like to have a broader discussion around from your perspective, what you consider needs from students and how your tool responds to it. You'll have it, you'll, you'll then in yeah. the second round, we'll go into an in depth uh, presentation of the, of the three tools, if that's Absolutely. fine with you. Absolutely. Thank you, Katrine. Um, so, one of the things that I would say that, that we notice is that students don't want to just sit in a classroom and hear from professors anymore. And so, our Aim to Flourish program really addresses that by getting students out of the classroom, even though right now that often just means talking to somebody else, even from their own homes. Um, and our Aim to Flourish program 
uh, involve students in doing interviews of business leaders that are doing having a positive impact on the world. And so really getting a chance to not only hear from their professors in their classrooms about um, you know, business ethics or sustainability or business as a force for good, responsible management education topics, but then also getting out of the classroom to hear directly from business leaders themselves that are, are living that, that, that life and um, have those types of businesses. And so um, our program really helps students, you know, build that bridge from, um, you know, academics to, to an experiential learning assignment where they get to, to talk to business leaders. Thank you so much and I think that that engagement with business leaders that kind of out of classroom activity is a, a clear need that, uh, that we hear expressed as well. Teresa, um, from your perspective, what do you hear students needing most and, and how does your tool deal with that? So um, for the most part, we work, our direct work is, is most often with professors, um, so we hear kind of uh, through the grapevine let's say. Um, but I would say that our tool is, um, is aimed at systemic change in the way that we look at corporate sustainability reporting, uh, corporate social accounting, how does that, um, how does that not just build on previous kind of CSR thinking, but actually change the way that, um, that a dialogue exists between society and how companies operate. Um, so I think it speaks to a, a kind of, you know, yearning for a more drastic change that a lot of times, you know, maybe we get complacent as we go older, or not complacent, but rather, um, uh, you know, we, we come to terms with the more incremental change. And I think some of, some of this kind of digging at uh, a system that, that might not be totally working. I think this gets to um, what a little bit about what students are interested in. So I have to say we they might not see that always in the work that they that they do in terms of looking at data research and um, uh, you know doing really like deep dives on on assessing how companies are performing. Um, but I think uh, similar to the aim to flourish, they connect to what companies are actually doing on the ground and and currently and um, and are able to use their research to then go out in the world and and have a conversation with companies and see and and see if they can get more information and and start that dialogue. Interesting. I remember from the survey uh, when we did the positive impact rating, the first survey, we had asked students specifically what they expect of their of their business schools to transform. And there were some, some demands that have nothing to do with our tools. So just to spice up the conversation, I'm sharing a few here. Um, I remember one of them was to kind of uh, de-invest de fossil fuel and kind of really kind of as, a, as an institution live up to the expectations of the future. Um, to stop student projects that involve traveling was kind of another one, which I found so counterintuitive because we from a business school have so often the perspective of thinking we, we want students to, 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 to gain an international experience, we want them to travel and so forth. So they said, you know, carbon footprint reduction, uh, why do you make us travel around the world? So interesting, there were some controversial other needs that came up. Thomas, maybe you can go a little bit into these needs as you are uh, um, representing here the positive impact rating. Um, what are the needs of the students from your perspective and how does the rating uh, help address that? Uh, I'm happy. Let me continue with what we did at the positive, with the positive impact rating. At the end of the survey, we asked all 3000 students that participated in the rating uh, to give us an answer to two open questions what should business schools stop doing and what should business schools start doing? Catherine gave you a few of the answers. The clear number one expectation on the part of the students was students want their schools to provide management education that results in positive impact for the world. Quite surprising and I will show you what we did with the positive impact rating a little later. Okay. Did, did you want to say anything more about how the tool actually helps students address that? If, if, if you want, if you want me to, a, just, a, just a couple of sure. sentences. Um, um, let me then move 
Don't go to your slide. Wait with your slide. But otherwise, we go into the second round of conversation if this ah. is what you wanted to add. Uh, I just wanted to give you the chance to expand a bit more, but we can. Why don't we go immediately to the second round, Thomas? Yes. That you will lead that. And the question here would be kind of now is the moment, kind of dive into your tool a little bit better. Explain us what your tool does, uh, how it helps students to, uh, in, how it does it help students to engage with the school, and how may it help um, to change the, the education. A process as we as we move to, to a digital environment. Um, okay. If you have I, a slide to change here, um, feel um, free to do to start. For some for some reason, I cannot show the slide. So let me go into it uh, orally. It shouldn't be a problem. Do you see below the? Do you see where you have the? Yes. The camera yeah. button. Yes. Sharing the, your slide. Yes, but for some reason it doesn't work. Let me go into it orally, no problem. So okay. the, 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 the motto of the positive impact rating that we started out with from the beginning is from being the best in the world to being the best for the world, which is a motto that was inspired from the 50 plus 20 vision uh, that part of the large group that developed the positive impact rating had been working on uh, some 10 years ago. Now, the positive impact rating is a by students and for students rating. It is done by students and we collaborate extensively with international student organizations like OICOS, ISEC, Net Impact, Studenten for Morgan from the Netherlands, uh, SOS for the Environment from the UK. And we work through them and the local student organizations to distribute our survey. Now, we had developed a positive impact rating model in a large group of academics and students uh, in the time before, where we try to define what is positive impact with regard to a business school education. And we came up with seven dimensions, 20 questions that we put into a framework, into a survey. Now, we ended up with this first round of the positive impact rating that we had launched last fall. Uh, and in the end, there were 51 schools participating from 22 countries, from five continents. So very diverse. Um, and we rated these schools on a five level model. Uh, level five being the highest, level one being the lowest. And we ended up with nine schools on level four. There was no school on level five. We called these schools on the level four the transforming schools. Uh, and we had 21 schools on level three. We call them progressing schools. Um, now, we launched these, the, the results of this positive impact rating at the World Economic Forum in Davos this January. Uh, at a Dean's Dialogue, uh, and all the results are available online under www.positiveimpactrating.org. Very simple. Now, what does this mean for the students, and how does it relate to the student needs? Three answers. One, it's a selection guide for future students. We clearly want to give them the option, the possibility to select their schools based on a rating on the positive impact of the education at the school. Second, we established, we created a survey tool which can be used locally by the student organization at their school for local action. So this dashboard is available to look into uh, what this what the student what the students said what kind of students answered uh, to the questions and uh, to give them an empirically sound and well-based idea of how to work with the students to improve the school and thirdly we suggested to the schools to call for to collaborate with the school management and for this reason the final results and the dashboard was made available to the management of the same schools as well, so that the student organizations could reach out 
to the school management, to the dean's office, if you want, or to the professors, to discuss the results with them and to improve on the results for the school. So this is what we did with the positive impact rating. Um, a follow-up question as I'm reading on the on chat is below that came is like, how do schools not already signed up or included today participate in the positive impact rating in the future? And maybe an invitation to all three of you, if you feel like adding your a link to to your initiatives, I suggest to add them to the to the chat um, at your convenience. Uh, that may be really useful to all of the participants here. Okay, just a brief answer to this question. Um, we already did receive more than fifty. Uh, we have more than fifty contacts from different schools all over the world that definitely want to participate in the next rating as well. So the list is growing. If you're interested, contact me, contact Catherine, or contact positiveimpact.org to, to, expl to, ex to explain your wish that you want to participate. Feel free, and we're more than happy to welcome you. Super, we'll add the links for contact so that Thomas and I uh, can actually handle the requests. We have uh, a super capable team who is able to embrace uh, and sign you on uh, for this. We'll add the links here. Teresa. Tell us about more about Wiki, Wiki. I was going to say uh, Wiki rate, Wiki, Wiki rate, and how it works and how it adds value to the students. And thanks uh, for already having added the link, uh, Megan as well. Thomas, I'm sure will add his link uh, shortly as well. Great. So, um, so Wiki rate uh, as an organization, um, we've built uh, an open data platform, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, seeing that uh, the information that is available on company sustainability performance is very kind of disparate and, and difficult to find. Um, and as well, the model that the primary model for accessing this data is through, uh, through paywalls, basically. Um, so it's really only accessible to a small group of stakeholders. Um, and we thought that we need to change that that model um, and also uh, to, to, to create a good feedback loop between companies and um, the societies in which they operate. Uh, and as well to uh, to do that while mapping what uh, where the gaps are. So we uh, very specifically capture information uh, on where companies are not reporting. Uh, so you can do a disclosure analysis on the platform and you can do Kind of performance analysis on the platform. Um, and with the principles for responsible management education, we spoke uh, some years ago, just after the, the SDGs were, uh, were adopted. Um, and we decided that within that context, we could um, look at how to track company sustainability performance according to the SDGs. So at looking at particular SDGs and um, metric questions that would apply to companies uh, within those SDGs. So we've been doing that for about four years now. Um, we initially reached out to the prime university community um, and we have a, a quite strong core uh, group of professors that engage annually um, and, and that's growing as well. Um, so, for example, um, just to give an example of kind of what the students are doing um, is uh, we have, actually this is not a prime university, but AY Women's University uh, in South Korea. Some students this semester are looking at, uh, they're working in groups and looking at uh, companies in the food and beverage sector and uh, in the auto industry, and they're looking at SDG five, gender equality, and SDG 12, consumption, responsible consumption and, and production. Um, and, and these course modules are kind of, Wikirate is, is incredibly flexible, um, and, and we've mapped or we've used other mappings of metrics to the SDGs uh, to be able to set up courses or to set up modules that fit to, you know, the, the course learning outcomes and that sort of thing. So they really kind of tailored to what the professor is looking for, do they want to introduce students 
to the SDGs in general, or do you want to look into environmental issues, social issues, that kind of thing? So you can you can be flexible that way. Um, another example, uh, one of the core universities that that's been part of this from the beginning is the University of Wollongong in Australia, and they um, their students this semester are looking at top apparel companies, um, and they're looking at uh, climate and environmental performance of those companies. Um, so that's SDG 13. Um, and those professors have actually been uh, leading in terms of organizing other university professors, other prime university professors in um, developing research publications around the project. So that's resulted in, I think, eight to 10 publications since 2018. Um, and I actually, I think that today there was a, a blog that came out because one of their papers received an award um, a couple of months ago. So I can also send that link around because it gives some context to, um, I think the more research perspective on how they look at uh, integrating this into classrooms and that sort of thing. Um, so initially, you know, we thought of this as something that could help institutions like Global Compact and others that were looking at how to track company performance. Um, but it turned out that the most value was really lying in how what students were getting out of the research, how they were learning about um, disclosure issues, um, and 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 the complexity of sustainability data. How do you track this? You know, if you were in, in a role of being, you know, the 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 reporting person in the company, how would that look? Um, to to try to understand your own data and and publish that information for the public. Uh, so they get kind of a they get a, a view to to something that I think a lot of students don't don't get, and then they also connect that to international frameworks and um, external ways of of looking at this. So that's yeah, that's what we've been working on, and um, I think that's a pretty good overview. Yes, that that uh, made it much more clear. There is a question uh, in the audience that maybe you would like to address, uh, Teresa. Um, Kent Williams has asked whether any of us here uh, in, in our tools are, so any of you are doing any experiential learning that is connected beyond business or business leaders or management uh, to kind of connect to biosphere and the planet. Would you know about that? Is there, have there been any of the activities that maybe addressing some of the SDGs would have involved that or how how is so if I understand the question, maybe I understand incorrectly, but I would I would think um, in terms of looking at planetary boundaries and, and framing company assessment in that regard, is that kind of do you think? Um, <laughs> I, I think I think the I, I cannot speak for the person that I was, who has asked the, the question. It may have been are are you involving uh, only only with companies or beyond also in other activities that that that, right. that okay. was my understanding. Right. Well, for, from WikiRate's uh, side, we're we're working strictly. Our database looks strictly at companies um, as the, as the subject, and that goes from brands to investors to factories in the supply chain. Uh, because we also do relationship mapping between companies uh, but yeah so we don't actually cross we have a very broad definition of what a company is so that can also include civil society um, there are also companies in our in our view and universities as well um, but we yeah we don't cross over into um, uh, looking at at the environment on its own necessarily but the data from the platform can always be taken out of the platform and used within that context Thank you. And thank you also very much for all of the participant comments. I'm reading as actively as I can, and I will come back with some of the questions to the panel. But first, Megan, let us know uh, how Aim to Flourish works and what the value is to students. Uh, tell us a bit more about your model. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Um, and I'm looking at the comments here. There are so many professors here that we already work with that we know that are kind of commenting in there and talking about Aim to Flourish for me. I feel almost not needed. Um, but I will tell you all a little bit about our program. So Aim to Flourish is a lot of things. Um, first off, it is a free, flexible, professor facilitated curriculum. So if you go to our Aim to Flourish website, which I shared the link, you can see um, a whole page of professor resources to help teach your students about the UN Global Goals, about business as a force for good, 
Also about appreciative inquiry, which is a methodology that we use at, at the Weatherhead School of Management. Um, it's a student assignment. So the students go out and interview a business leader. They look at businesses through the lens of the UN SDGs to say, here are 17 different ways that business could be a positive force in the world. Um, and then they interview a business leader and write up a story. Um, it's a platform. If you go to the innovation section of our website, you can see more than 2,700 stories published, all written by students um, individually or in groups um, from around the world. We have more than 140 professors that have been participating with us that are more than more than 100 universities from around the world. So these are stories of business making a positive impact um, from every corner um, of the world. And um, and it's also a, a prizing process. So every year we um, honor the businesses, the students and the professors with the annual Flourish Prize. Um, this year, it was very exciting. We've had many schools that are prime schools um, that were Flourish Prize winners and, and many that have been Flourish Prize winners over the past four years that we've been doing this process. Um, so the um, students are very, engaged with this this program um, it's it's easy to fit into your curriculum it's an inner you know an interview assignment students go out they get a chance to interview a business leader um, you know to answer i think kent's question a little bit you know we do ask that students interview businesses specifically but the type of business or the type of organization that they can that they're interviewing can really be dictated by your class or by their own passions so um, they could be interviewing an arts organization, and we do have stories on our site about ways that arts organizations are making a positive impact, or the story could have more to do with climate action and an organization that's very focused on those kind of initiatives. So, um, yes, it is business, but it's also very adaptable and adjustable. Um, I have many examples of how professors have been able to um, adapt the session for their courses specifically. That's why I always say that it's very flexible. Um, if your course is about a specific topic and you want your students to to interview someone in a specific area, you can require that um, we keep things very flexible and open so that we can fit into all sorts of classes. Um, we hear tons of student feedback about how, you know, this has opened their eyes to the UN Global Goals that they didn't know about the UN Global Goals. And now they're seeing how business can 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 actually play a part in achieving the global goals, um, which is often sometimes you know, an area that's that's overlooked. It's, it's governments and nonprofits and not always, you know, how can for profit businesses play a part in this. Um, we've been we've been sharing quotes on student quotes on our social media channels. Um, and so please go ahead and take a look. We'll continue to do that and to share student experiences so that you can see the different ways that this assignment has really impacted the students that um, that we've been able to work with and um, you know, now we're also celebrating our Flourish Prize winners, and so you can see a lot of that on our social media as well. Um, and it's, it's very exciting to see so many professors commenting here about our program. Um, but thank you for, for letting me take the opportunity to tell you more about Aim to Flourish. And, um, you know, we'd be we'd love to have all prime schools involved in Aim to Flourish. It is free, and I am happy to help get you set up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all three uh, of you. I'm a great fan of all your tools. And I find that once that you know how they work and your students know how they work, they're just, they're, they're transformational. They're easy to use, they're fabulous. Um, maybe, so and I can see that many of those here on the call already know one or several of them as well. I would suggest the next call of um, a round of questions to each of you. Looking at here mostly, I believe we have a, a business school professors. Maybe some students are in here too in the in the in our session. What would help you um, scale your your tool more? Uh, what's what has been what have been you know possible um, challenges for you to kind of to grow at different schools? And what might what might help you? And then yes, let's see what let's see what uh... um, Teresa would you like to start? Sure, thanks. Um, so we, I think one of the things that, that we're, we suffer from is our very small size. Um, <laughs> we're quite a, a micro institution, I think um, about four people based in Berlin and, uh, and we have some developers around, around the world. Um, 
but we, for us, it's mostly, I think, getting, getting the word out. Um, and in order to, to get more kind of traction, that's, that's one thing. And then, um, because it, it might be a bit daunting to, to, because we primarily, we engage with professors from the outset or, um, or somebody that's, that's at the head of a department that's, you know, uh, showcasing it to professors. Um, sometimes, I think sometimes there's a bit lost in translation about how really um, structured and specific it is. So it's, uh, I think sometimes we come across as, as an organization where you can kind of, um, you can rate something in the sense of like a hotel rating kind of, or, you know, like an experience rating kind of tool. Um, but it's really kind of hard, uh, granular topics that we're looking at. So greenhouse gas emissions, water use, <laughs> and, you know, human rights abuses and things like this, that sometimes, um, it's, it's hard to see necessarily from just looking at the platform. And then again, because Wikirate has, um, so much information on it, we, we also, we, we don't necessarily funnel you know, universities down the right, the right path on the website. So I think somebody asked um, for some, some examples of the work and I, we can send something like that around. Um, but yeah, so I think, yeah, it, it helps us anyway to have a conversation directly with somebody before they use the platform, I think. Um, and, and so that takes a bit more time than just, you know, people setting up their own projects um, mm -hmm. I think that that takes, it takes a bit more time to understand how the platform works. Thank you. Yes. Um, Megan, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, so the, the technical, I guess, technical aspects of the way that aim to flourish works is that behind the scenes on our website, we have a, a story workflow where students write their story on the website, they put it in boxes. They can send it to their professor that way. Professors review the story. Um, professors can send it back if the story needs corrections. They can write comments on it. Students can fix what they need to send it back to their professors. Um, and then the, then, then the story goes to um, our editorial review, which is a team of volunteers. So I am constantly um, getting new volunteers, training new volunteers. Um, they can come from anywhere all over the world. Um, we're collecting we're collecting. We, we've been getting more volunteers um, from Latin American countries because we do encourage students if they like to write their stories in their native language and in English. Um, so, you know, as far as as being able to grow, I mean, we can grow as fast as we can get stories edited. So um, it's we're constantly working on having more volunteers to help us edit those stories and then the team myself and um, the students that I have working with me at the Fowler Center, we get the stories published. Um, I know that, you know, oftentimes professors get an apology from me because things get a little slow. Um, you know, sometimes things, external things happen, like all of us getting sent home this year um, caused some delays, but we really work very fast on getting everyone's stories through the workflow and published. So, um, you know, large class sizes are not a huge, not a problem for us. I mean, if you want to have every single one of your 300 students write their own story, um, by all means, just let me know that, uh, you know, that's what we're going to be expecting and we will get ourselves prepared to be able to handle your class. Um, a lot of professors that do have those large class sizes put their students in groups. Usually we see groups of four or five students um, in that case. That way um, there are less stories for the professors to, to read, but um, we are you know, we are ready to go for whatever our professors need and we just continue to grow and, and continue to want to have more professors and more students and more stories. And Thomas, challenges for the positive impact rating. You're muted right now. Certainly we have challenges as well. I mean, working with and through organizations, that's a lot of work. It's a it's a bag of fleas if you want, and they change every year. So you really have to keep up uh, communication and contacts with them. That's already quite a job. Uh, and we have John on the call who has joined the uh, positive impact rating recently, uh, who will be in charge of uh, managing these relations. 
Um, finances clearly is an issue currently. Uh, we've put up the positive impact rating. We've established it for the past two years with uh, minimal money, minimal finances, and a lot of voluntary work of all the people involved. And we were really overwhelmed with the success that we had when we presented it uh, in Davos, a huge interest. So market doesn't really seem to be our main issue, our main problem, but uh, financing the prof the prof a professional organization and to develop it, uh, that will be our major challenge uh, as there are a lot of interested schools now wanting to participate next round and we're trying to get our act together and finance it for the next round. So sorry if I can't tell you more, but we're currently discussing this. Wonderful, thank you. Now we're already approaching a final. We have a little bit less than 10 minutes uh, left. If we take a step back from our tools and we, we connect a, a gap back again to the student needs, what I'm also curious about, so this, these are great tools that enrich um, or enhance the influence of students to the school or enrich the learning experience, right? So I'm curious, is, is how would you judge, is your tool a, um, does, does your tool help the, the school management assess quality or improvement? Is, is your tool a way for the school to see that they are making steps into the right direction to become a more positive impact? or to create or to serve society, if you want, uh, in a more meaningful way, which is kind of the current demand of students. Um, Teresa, would you like to go first? Can I pass because I was just typing and <laughs> and English so, sure. and so Megan, you go. Not overwhelmed. I, I'd be happy to go. Um, so with all of our with all of our stories, um, when the student writes the story on um, you know on that that dashboard side of the website, we do have a small survey that we ask them to to fill out. It's just you know like a pre and post kind of survey, and we also ask them to complete a student experience. Um, I am always happy to share this data with any of our professors that want that data. Um, I do get requests occasionally that say, "Hey, can you send me?" You know, can you send me my data from my class from 2019 or 2018 or all my classes um, from everywhere? So, um, you know, we we haven't done a lot of publishing that data, you know, on specific schools because I feel like that's kind of for the professor for the school individually, and I'm always happy to share that. Um, we do try to publish, you know, information on Aim to Flourish about how much we've grown and how many students we have. Um, but we are always we are always trying to share uh, more of our student experiences and for any of our professors that are interested, they can always reach out and I can send them a spreadsheet with their story data, with their student survey data and their student experiences. Thomas, would you like to go next? You're, mu you're muted. <laughs> the beauty of the- Sorry, sorry. Um, to use the, the positive impact rating as a tool, I think schools can, can really use it as a planning and controlling tool. Uh, I can see three steps that, use, that should can be used and uh, schools do use to assess your current position where you are with regards to the positive impact of your school. Secondly, to define strategies and actions to improve on the current situation. And thirdly, to monitor the improvements. And that clearly is uh, needed if you think of accreditations. And I was in charge of accreditations for uh, 20 years at the University of St. Gallen. Uh, Equis uh, demands in chapter nine, a full integration of ethics, responsibility and sustainability into all areas of the business school. So you, you need a tool to monitor your improvements and the new ASCSB accreditations that are currently being finalized, they will expect from ASCSB accredited schools as well to report on the progress that they do in the sustainability area. So I think it's a very helpful tool that can be used for planning, implementation, controlling, if you want. So I've asked the audience to please let us know what they would like Prime to focus on to enhance the student experience and their impact as change makers at schools. 
and uh, maybe an invitation to the to the audience to uh, to type some uh, recommendations, some insights, some questions in the in the chat uh, in the chat here. Um, I'm super impressed how how my panelists are able to multitask. Uh, there's a lot of questions in the chat, and they're able to respond to them while we're talking, which is very cool. Thank you so much to all three of you. Um, a final word to all three of you about what you would uh, wish or hope Prime could do more to help your tools or um, the student experience, student impact uh, grow. I guess uh, with your specific experience, uh, yeah, I look forward just to hearing what, uh, what, what that perspective would be. Thomas, would you like to go first? Sure, I can. Uh, I mean, Prime being a business of responsible leadership education, I mean, they should really love our positive impact rating because that's exactly going into their direction. Um, I was a bit disappointed to see that on the panel on the rankings that will be taking place tomorrow, there are all the more or less established ranking organizations. Maybe if you accept uh, the Corporate Knights ranking in Canada and the New Times Higher Education ranking on the SDGs, but which is for universities, it's not for business schools. So I think Prime could and should adopt the positive impact rating. It's very, very easy. Teresa. Sure. Um, I think some, Prime is, has always been really supportive in kind of getting, getting the word out and helping us. As I mentioned, we're quite a small organization. So doing kind of the legwork of, of letting people know that the tool is out there. Um, and that we're available to, to support. Um, so always more of that is fantastic. Um, and I think as well, um, looking at how, uh, I mean, we, we have a lot of word of mouth from professors, but I think, you know, kind of maybe going top down and, and getting buy-in from the, um, the deans in, in universities and things like that, um, I think can really help to integrate sustainability education in general at, at, a, at a more deep level um, in each of the courses. Um, I think one of the things that we, we see is, you know, of course, this is a network of business uh, management institutions, um, but, you know, we see that sustainability is relevant, uh, you know, across quite a lot of different subject areas. Uh, including business and management, but we we don't necessarily see it integrated in um, all of the business areas that I think it should be, and um, uh, and then also connecting across uh, to other types of focuses that aren't maybe strictly management focused. Teresa and Megan. Um, I think very very simply, you know, we'd love to see more prime schools sign up and and use our, the aim to flourish program in 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 your courses um you know the more universities and professors that we have using aim to flourish the more stories we get out there the more students we are impacting and the more we can share these stories of of ways that business is having a positive impact on the world thank you so much for all to you to be so brief uh, I give you a chance also to kind of look at the comments that have been made by the by the participants. Really, really inspiring, really interesting to see kind of how you're self-organizing, how we can create a little bit of a sense of community here by asking questions, finding other participants, uh, answering the questions and uh, helping each other. It's certainly uh, a great regret for all of us that we don't see each other uh, in person, that we can't uh, now walk out and uh, have a cup of coffee together which would be really kind of the nice conference experience that we would have and simply otherwise we're just going to push to the next session so from my side i just wanted to say thank you i i a thought that occurred to me while i was listening to the three of you is that there may be a benefit of collaborating between the three tools to see how the, the networks of one tool may help the network of another tool they all have the same interests at heart as many of us who are in the session here and uh, that that may be a way to kind of spread the good news and to inspire schools uh, to uh, to engage as well i would i would think a school that has already been using uh, uh, aim to flourish or wiki rate 
uh, would be a perfect candidate to participate in the positive impact rating and vice versa a school that has done the, the positive impact rating is going to be looking for tools to enhance and in increase their impact uh, of students so i think uh, that's probably an additional uh, benefit here as much as it is um, hopefully an interest an, an interesting session for all of the participants here who uh, who have managed to connect a little bit more uh, share and exchange uh, um, and their, their, their ideas and email addresses and, uh, and being able to help each other. So from the panel, I would like to say a quick thank you very much for everybody, for the, partic for the participants, for your great questions, and of course to the fantastic uh, panelists for Megan, Teresa and Thomas. Thank you so much for having taken the time thank out you. to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Catherine. Thank you.